This video is brought to you by Skillshare, the largest learning community on the web. I'm sure that you have noticed the rise of Blender and the increase of its popularity, which means its user base is growing. But to be honest, this will not translate easily into using it professionally if you are trying to join the industry, whether you want to be a game developer, a VFX artist, an animator, and so on, at least on the highest levels. The thing is, before you become a professional, you need to go to school or a university to study art. Or I should say, this is how most professional artists pave their way to getting a job in the industry. And most likely than not, you will not be taught how to learn Blender. Rather, you will learn industry standard software like Max, Maya, ZBrush, Houdini, and so on. You might say that Blender is way better than it was 5 or 10 years ago, and I agree with you on that. But the reality is different and schools still avoid Blender for many reasons. I'm not sure if you are aware, but there is a vicious cycle of interest between schools and software companies like Autodesk. This has been cementing industry standard software like Maya in school curriculums for decades now. But why is that the case really? And is it true that schools avoid Blender to help you get a job or is it because they are encouraged or I should say lured and tempted by companies like Autodesk to use their software instead of Blender. And what are these tactics used to keep software like Maya in its curriculums instead of letting Blender be part of it? But most importantly, are there even any schools or universities teaching Blender right now? The first thing that comes to mind to give schools the benefit of the doubt is that I think they are focused on job placement first and foremost, especially if it is a famous school in an area where there are a lot of studios, whether it be game development, animation, or VFX studios. In other words, they focus on metrics of post-graduation. As a consequence, they are more likely than not to teach students software that they increase their chances of being hired so they can work professionally. And this is of course using industry standard software. At universities, you might find instructors teaching many different software, including Blender. But I think when it comes to prestigious art schools that promise to prepare you professionally, I mean, that kind of guarantee that you will get a job, it only makes sense for them to go with software such as Maya and Max as their main 3D packages. Also, something that comes to mind is that animation schools, VFX or game development schools normally teach the software that they think is the most commonly used by big studios in the area. Blender is great in everything. In fact, if you look around, you will see a lot of studios, especially small game development studios using it to work on their game development projects. But when it comes to bigger projects and bigger studios using Blender, we don't see that often. It is true, however, that many artists use it on big projects inside studios. But the fact remains is that it is not the main 3D package. For example, in AC Studios, Ubisoft uses Max as the main 3D package. And for Naughty Dog Studio, for example, Maya has been the flagship 3D package for working on games like The Last of Us, Uncharted, and others. Alongside software such as Zebras, Substance Painter, and so on. And Blender, despite its growing popularity and significant improvements, still faces some challenges in gaining widespread industry acceptance. One of the main reasons is its perception as a tool that is primarily used for hobbyists and freelancers rather than a professional grade software. There are a lot of artists who use it professionally, but not a lot in comparison with other 3D software. This perception is partly due to its open source nature and the fact that it is free, which can lead to assumptions about its capabilities and support. And now let me tell you about this. Another problem is that many professionals and studios, in addition to schools, are heavily invested in these ecosystems, including proprietary plugins and pipelines that are deeply integrated into their workflows, making a switch to Blender more challenging. Before we continue, as you all know, by now I've been using Skillshare for a while and it's been very helpful and I even launched my class recently. In some parts of the world, summer break is right around the corner, 
which is I think a great time to explore your passion and hobbies. Skillshare offers a multitude of different classes from art to writing to motion graphics, game development and everything else in between. So no matter what you have in mind, you can start today by picking a class and kickstart your learning journey. And you can go over the classes at your own pace and you get to do super fun projects with other learners as well. For me, my summer bucket list is going to be about animation, product visualization and motion graphics in general. So if you're like me, I suggest picking up some of the Derek Elliott's classes, who is an amazing instructor with outstanding looking results. For example, this class called Product Animation in Blender, bring your 3D renders to life, in which you will learn how to move a camera through a scene, also how to add keyframes to cameras, objects and lighting, create looping animations, and how to explore two different ways to render your final piece. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and be one of the first 500 people to have a full and free month of Skillshare Premium subscription and have access to anything you want. And now back to the video. And now let me tell you one of the reasons that is creating a vicious cycle or dominance of industry standard software which is kind of leaving Blender aside when it comes to being taught in schools. The thing is, Autodesk and other 3D software companies often make strategic deals with colleges and art schools to promote their software and create a pipeline or let's just say trained professionals familiar with their tools which are also industry tools. And now let's see what that entails. Autodesk for example offers free access to a software for students and teachers through its education community system or community program. This, from what you have probably guessed, allows schools to provide their students with access to professional-grade software like Max and Maya. But it also extends to software such as AutoCAD, Revit, Fusion 360, and others for example, at no cost. And the interesting thing is that, in addition to offering free software, Autodesk provides extensive resources for teachers, including curriculum guides, teaching materials, and certification programs to help integrate their tools into classroom settings. Translation, they are engraved into the teaching environment, making it super hard for any other software to put its foot in the door. And from what I can see, this not only facilitates the teaching of industry standard software, because the tricky part is, by doing this, Autodesk strengthens its position in the market as graduates are more likely than not to prefer using and recommend the software that they are already proficient in and the ones they learned in school. Which makes sense. So naturally, this automatically decides for students what they will use post-graduation. But to be honest, everyone is free to use whatever they want. And if that is Blender, then be it. Furthermore, Another tactic to entice schools is that companies like Autodesk, for example, partner with educational institutions to provide bulk licensing options and site licenses, which allow schools to install software across multiple computers and access advanced features for quote-unquote educational purposes. And as you can see, through the combination of all these strategies, software companies like Autodesk not only promote their software, but also prepare a new generation of professionals skilled using its own tools, thereby reinforcing the dominance in the industry, which is part of what makes it hard for 3D software such as Blender to be popular among schools. But the good news is that it is not an uncommon practice for teachers to instruct students on the software that they are most familiar with, I mean those they learned in the industry, and allow students the flexibility to use any other 3D software that they find useful. For example, the teacher can use industry standard software like Maya at the same time, he or she doesn't mind students using Blender to finish projects, which is I think a good thing. It is true as you know that Blender is becoming better as a 3D software, especially in the last 5 or 6 years. But the thing is, many art school instructors have extensive experience with the established software and may not be familiar and comfortable with software such as Blender. This is I think also one of the reasons making it hard for schools to adapt to Blender. Simply because this expertise gap means the instructors are more likely to teach the tools they know well. 
rather than investing time and resources into learning and integrating new software into their courses. Another thing is change needs time. Because you can't ask everyone to change the whole curriculum of their schools overnight, the best thing you can expect is to add Blender as an option if they see demand for it. On the bright side, the development of comprehensive teaching materials and lesson plans for Blender is catching up compared to more established software. And I personally think that this is especially true with online schools because they follow the demand from the market rather than looking only at what the industry needs. And I think this approach will help more people to learn Blender and integrate it into schools in the future. Now the question is, are schools and universities using a teaching Blender? The short answer is yes, but the fact remains. You are more likely to find schools teaching industry standard tools for the reasons I mentioned above. But hopefully, Blender gets more integrated into the industry, and after that, automatically schools will pick it up naturally, because why not? I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.